turkeys and chickens and things, you put down disinfectants to keep the germs at bay. And that contains chlorine. So in the litter that you gather from these facilities, there will be a percentage of chlorine. And that chlorine will go into making in, uh, dioxins and purines when you burn this material. Okay, well, when I was giving this talk once in Wales, the bulb went on the projector, so I had to do this with my hands. Fat-soluble. We always have to be worried about fat-soluble substances that get into our bodies because they can cross the membranes. They can, they can beat the first line of defense. The first line of defense for the cell of our tissues is the membrane. But the membrane's made of fat. So if you have something which is fat-soluble, it can go straight through the membranes into the cell, and then it has access to sensitive parts of the cell, the nucleus, etc., the mitochondria, and so on. Okay, so this is what happens when dioxins and furans go into the cell. They find a protein called the AH receptor. Now, there are two remarkable things about this AH receptor, this protein. First of all, after 30 years, we still do not know what it's meant to be doing. We don't know what its natural purpose is. We only know what happens when dioxin co-ops it. The second thing which is extraordinary is that this protein appears in evolution at the same time as the backbone appears in fish. So every animal species above boneless fish has this protein in it. And what that tells the biologist is it must be performing a vital function, an important function, because it says if it's in every species, no species survived that didn't have this protein. So it's a very important part of biology. We just don't know what that part is. What we do know is what happens when dioxin attaches to this protein. Another protein attaches. The whole thing changes shape. It goes into the nucleus. It attaches to the DNA, the genetic material in the nucleus, and switches on genes. And the end result of switching on these genes is to produce new proteins in the cell. In other words, the dioxin dramatically changes the activities of the cell. Now, what kind of activities? They produce new enzymes, which changes basic chemistry. More importantly, the dioxin interferes with at least six different hormones. Ah! Hormones, <laughs> very important in development, especially of young children interferes with all these hormones. These hormones are designed to deliver signals to different tissues to regulate different things at different times in the body. And they usually function at very, very low levels. For example, um, estrogen, the female hormone, fluctuates, I think it is between 18 parts per trillion and 300 parts per trillion in the female body different times, during menstrual cycle, for instance, during pregnancy. Detoxifying organism, uh, organ. What does it do? How does it work? How does it detoxify? And the answer is, it converts fat-soluble substances, both natural ones and invading molecules, like dioxin, <coughs> into water-soluble substances. That's the thing. It converts them from fat-soluble to water-soluble. Once they've been converted into water-soluble, you can get rid of them. You can pee them out. You get them out through the kidney if they're water-soluble. <coughs> but it doesn't work for dioxins. And it doesn't work for PCBs. And it doesn't work for some organochlorine pesticides. So where do they go? They go to our fat. And they accumulate in our fat over a lifetime. The half-life of dioxin in the human body is about nine years. So if you have a dose today, Nine years from now, you have half a dose left in your body. Another nine years, you could be down to a quarter of a dose. And another nine years, down to an eighth of a dose. It takes you ages to clear this. And even today, soldiers that served in Vietnam still have detectable levels of dioxin in their fat. The man has no way of getting rid of this stuff. The woman has. It's called having a baby. And so the woman who's exposed to dioxin over 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, stores up that dioxin in her fat, and then when she has a first baby, for nine months it moves from her
her fat through the placental membrane into the baby's fat. And so the baby is having to contend with what Linda Birnbaum describes as growth dysregulators, the most potent ones we know. The most fragile human beings in our society get the highest doses of these problematic materials. <coughs> that is half of the dioxin problem. And there's an enormous amount of material that's been written about this. The highest doses go to the babies in the womb. We conclude that exposure to increased concentrations of dioxins both in the uterus and via breast milk seems to modulate the hypothalamic maturity thyroid regulatory system in newborn babies. And what you would predict from this is a mental behavioral problems is one of the things, because this is very important for brain development. And sure enough, subsequent studies showed very subtle behavioral differences, IQ deficits, and so on. <coughs>